everyone, this is Alex Pichkowski with yet another episode of the Aleph Zero podcast. In this episode, we'll introduce you to a highly promising project in our ecosystem, the metaverse called Darkverse. We have Wukas Plava, one of the masterminds behind the project, who will share his insights on building such a Web3 gaming experience. So, without further ado, let us begin. Hello, Wukash. Let's begin with the customary introduction. You're in Bellwether Rocks and in Darkverse. What brought you here and what's next for you? Uh, hi. Uh, yeah, I'm Lucas, and I'm head of blockchain economy at Darkverse. Um, often when uh, someone asks me what I do in life, I say that I'm jack of all trades. Such, you know, person who connects seemingly distant dots. And uh, yeah, I mean, i done lots of things in the past. But like last six years uh, have been mainly running IT projects, um, including those based on blockchain and advising in Bellwetter uh, companies from the gaming industry and uh, where I am heading uh, to the dark side. <laughs> Thank you for tuning into the Aleph Zero podcast. Be sure to leave a review and subscribe to get the latest insights from the core team and projects in the ecosystem. Now back to the show. So let's start discussing Darkverse. What is it? What differentiates it from other Metaverse projects? Uh, sure. Um, yeah. Uh, let me start by saying that uh, the Metaverse is for me a neat buzzword. Uh, I mean, in practice, like the Metaverses are a bit more like complex online games. So in Darkverse, we adapted strategies that like above all, we want to make a good game. And such game which traditional console or PC players would like to play. And uh, yeah, this distinguishes, I think, us from the current projects in the crypto industry, which all are called metaverses. But uh, yeah, so with due respect for our competitors, um, you know, there is not much uh, in these projects at the moment. I mean, usually there is nothing to do there. Like there is no story, no plot, um, unique mechanics. Uh, yeah, there is something, something that attracts people to the games. Uh, there are tokens. There is NFT for that, and yeah, that's it. So this is not our way. Um, yeah, f for us, blockchain is like extension, like extension of possibilities, and uh, you know, well-designed virtual world. Uh, so we don't want to push people into tokens. We want to just give them like, like you know, more opportunities. Um, so I mean, I don't know. We have much space here to talk about what Darkverse is about. I mean, the story. Uh, what do you think? Like, I should like. Uh, yeah, we should definitely explore that. Uh, I feel that most metaverse games uh, currently being developed build their sense of cool because they're metaverse games and they do not put as much stress on the story, whereas the story is equally as important while the, the metaverse itself is just a form to express this story, may perhaps add an economic value to it, but uh, the story is equally important because they are inherently games. So let's, of course, discuss the story of Darkverse. What is the story behind Darkverse? Okay. okay. I think, yeah, part of it will be probably in the later, uh, but yeah, so... In short, because I'm, you know, I'm, I'm like blockchain guy, not like a specialist on the world building, but uh, like from the beginning, uh, this will be, I mean, Darkverse will be the MMORPG game, uh, set in the dark city of Babylon, like, and the city is in the body of a huge monster called Leviathan. Um, yeah, this already sounds like, you know, like you're building city in the like body of the monster and this monster is extremely huge, uh, travels through the universe and like absorbing whole matter. Uh, and later inside his body, he is somehow recompiles, re recompiles this in, in his body. So like, let's say the players will be introduced to such like dystopic world, um, really dark which actually they appear in the world, which they don't know what it's about. Um, this is just kind of process of like uh, copying the DNA from, from the universe to the body of this monster. And then the whole game will be the like discovering why I'm here, what is this world about, how to, you know, find myself in this world. And there are some factions, there are some like other players, they also have their own goals. So um, yeah, we want to give players a chance 
for unique experiences. So um, yeah, there will be some unusual situation in the game that will put traditionally understood morality to the test. Um, and uh, on the other hand, uh, we know that not all players like competition and fighting. So <clears throat> later for these players, there will be some something like more balanced path with uh, mechanics, let's call them metaverse-like. Uh, and they will play bigger role there. So, you know, this will be like allow you to play with space, to build, um, cooperate, communicate, and build more like relationship with other players. All right. So from what I understand, uh, Dark Force will be somewhat of a sandbox game. Uh, but can you tell us something more about the main story or perhaps the side quest that will accompany it and how players will be led through the game? Uh, you know, I mean, there will be for sure, like, I mean, main story, as you know, you're playing in RPG, so you're role-playing some character, and uh, so my main story will be, like, behind, like, uh, of of the, like, discovering this world and finding the these mysteries of, of, of this monster, uh, but uh, there will be, like, other side of the game, which we hope, actually, that in the future, if we develop such mechanics, um, players will be able to create their own content. There will be some kind of competitions for the storylines, competitions for the assets. So like everything called UGC, which is so much metaverse-like. And then like people will do their own stories. Yeah. So this will be like major, major story. Main story is for attract them. Uh, but sooner or later, people will finish it. And later on, um, they will be responsible for building the another layers, another like biomes, another worlds, another stories, uh, like uh, from scratch. Uh, this sounds really similar to Fortnite. Uh, they're really good at building these kind of structures. Yeah, yeah, they they doing actually really really great. I mean, you know, Fortnite for me is one of the projects that is closest to call it metaverse. Especially, I I was in such event in Turin and there was a vice president, I suppose, from from Epic Games, and he was uh, announcing this uh, UGC Unreal Engine. He was actually. Um, talking about the like uh, he call it web 40 just on you know for to joke <laughs> from web 3 yeah. that you know they already he's heading out I mean he, he want to go something in the future um, but in general um, they focus on on uh, actually being metaverse slowly yeah like making concerts it's not only gaming it's it's for kids uh, nowadays actually another communication layer more important I think that even traditional social media. Uh, yeah, I feel that when I play Fortnite, I oftentimes feel really, really old. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, I know people actually, you know, um, I playing myself Fortnite as well, but I know people actually, lots of people 40 plus who playing, just they playing a bit different way. I mean, not so heavy, uh, like as a pro as, as teenagers. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think what's most valuable about it is that it's a space where you could test uh, strategies and explore user-generated content. And I think uh, for metaverses in general, it is the standard to aspire to and also kind of, I think, uh, shows the way for what uh, Darkverse could be in the future. Yeah, we are we actually much more uh, into going the direction of Fortnite, of Roblox than like uh, metaverses which are crypto uh, because they are still empty and uh, there is not so many users, there is nothing to do there. So this approach is actually, um, for me, a mistake from the beginning. Yeah, They are not attractive, good games. All right. Uh, so, we know that Darkverse has been developing for some time. Can you please tell us about the updates on the project? Uh, we've recently become aware that work on the first in-game location has been going well. So, can you catch us up on the progress and what's been happening with you guys? Uh, okay, um, I hope I will not, you know, rush here and uh, say too much. But, uh, yeah, I mean, we start development at the end of 2022 uh, and concept work even earlier, like around June last year. Uh, so until the end of 2022, our work was mainly on paper. Um, these were concepts generally related to world building. Um, yeah, everything that makes our virtual world unique, um, like ideas for factions, uh, characters, architecture, which will be related to brutalism. Um, and finally, like works related to research on the blockchain layer and uh, game economy. Uh, but yeah, our, you know, um, 
I need to just also mention that, that our way to work on Darkverse is uh, quite sped up. I mean, compared to traditional way, traditional roadmap for production of this size. Um, like, you know, we're making double A game, third person perspective, and uh, we are working on Unreal 5. So this makes combine like quite, quite big game. So like, like, you know, like simultaneously we coordinating the work of like few departments, art, world building, level and game design. Uh, yeah, we test those ideas directly in the engine already. Um, yeah, we are slowly activating our community uh, and this will be really crucial for success of our game in the future. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, this is actually my job, which I can say, but we are preparing for the regulatory and technical side for this la for launch of the token, smart contracts, web three stuff in general. And this dealing with lawyers, you know, it's actually yeah. in Switzerland is quite hard. So, um, yeah, I mean, this, this game will be quite complex. And this means in practice that full version will be released in about three years. Um, this is actually like why we chopped our game into few parts. Um, we decided to publish uh, like, you know, like L1. It will be like uh, beginning of next year. This is kind of like part one. Yeah, I mean, you know, kind of a fraction of a game introducing some mechanics, introducing some part of the city we are building. But, you know, just like creating like everything 3D from scratch because we don't, we're not using any like um, assets from, from any marketplace. We're just developing everything original. So yeah, this takes so much time and you can't actually scale it. You can't make it faster. Yeah, such double A game, it's about three, four years of development. Triple A games, about four to six years. So this is actually, how it's going but yeah like we're having uh, fun <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, great to have such an insight uh, but can you tell us what can we expect in uh, parts one and two of dark first uh, because i expect that uh, with a project that is uh, in which so much work is being put into i'm pretty sure these first two parts will be pretty cool so can you tell us what can we as players expect to find in them yeah i mean i know but i don't know i should tell everything huh. because this is also not not you know not my part of the job but um um like let's say that uh, in generally like in whole game when when the whole game will be released there will be like lots of different mechanics and we can't develop them like to part one let's say like advanced combat or so so we actually focused in l1 more about like on introducing the story to the people, show them how this work, how this aesthetics, how actually, um, how this world is built, how the factions fighting and what's their goal, um, uh, how player can uh, manipulate others or how player can, can challenge uh, like uh, uh, the NPCs and, and, and the world, which is not so friendly actually. So that's uh, first part will be uh, more story driven and then like another part will add more, more and more um, advanced mechanics and and combats awesome so that's actually the part of the game i'm most excited about is how the prisoner's dilemma will play out because this opens up an amazing field for interaction between the players uh, but the thing i wanted to ask you about is how have your initial assumptions about what the game will be change from the moment you started designing it so how has dark first changed from when you began to where you are now and how do you think it will change in the future yeah uh, this is actually a really good question i want to say um yes um of course um you know this is natural game development process the I iteration uh so uh never and i'm quite sure my words there was game released exactly like the original idea uh, yeah, like making games, and I'm not, you know, like showing off now just because I'm working on the game, but making games is extremely complex process and the term, it determines how, the way you, the way you work. So, um, there's even such, uh, in game industry, there is such saying that, uh, there is no game, uh, this is not, uh, the game is never finished. The game is released. 
-hmm. So it's uh, yeah, it's and it's not about you know underdeveloped games uh, or unoptimized games, which are like like uh, I mean recently uh, quite common in in games like that some triple studios were releasing game which is not optimized or underdeveloped yeah. but it just it just means that you know you are like artist never satisfied from your project and especially there is not one artist but can be hundreds of them and they cooperating yeah. to make one, one one thing and uh they often argue they often have different vision um they everyone want to show their um, skill. Everyone want to show uh, like a fraction that it's responsible for. Yeah, but I think this also uh, promotes creativity because you want the end result to become better and better. And of course, you may not know when to stop, but uh, there is this motivation. Yeah, you know, this is uh, we 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 when we focus on this uh, location one or part part one, it's actually we also care about the feedback from the community so we want to you know invite a few thousand players to this uh l1 and like catch everything that they value in the game or things they don't like uh, and with this knowledge we will start to work on the next two stages of our game and there will be much bigger i mean each part of our game will be much bigger than the previous one all right, well, I was thinking because there are so many projects in the Web3 space that, of course, have a token, but when you really think about it, they don't really need to have these kind of mechanics. So couldn't Dark First work as a more traditional game? Why Web3? Why add a token system? Ah, uh, so you want to know uh, why uh, why Web3? Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, so, um, yeah, um, you know, actually, uh, not so long ago, like even one month ago, I have a slightly different answer for this question. I was uh, when I was answering uh, such question to the people, like talking on conference or something. I was mainly focused on how Web three gives the players the ability to be the masters of their own game and assets. Um, so if a game on blockchain will be as good as traditional one, and this is our goal. But additionally, after investing hundreds or sometimes thousands of hours, we can monetize our time. So why not? And uh, this is not only that. If you if the game you know creates a number of opportunities for players to interact in a different way than traditional games do. So for example, like voting on blockchain, or um, yeah, more support for UGC. Which, uh, yeah, besides lately Fortnite, most of traditional gaming is still far from being into. So, <clears throat> yeah, my conclusion is, uh, you know, I was uh, answering why, uh, I mean, wh what else player uh, players can, I mean, Web3 can offer for players, but I was not answering why. So this answer actually comes to me in Austin. I was in a consensus uh, conference and... I find their first AAA game, which is on Web3, um, and I spoke to developers, uh, which uh, you know, working working on this game. So uh, it's still quite rare to see such like experienced people because they were from major major companies, major studios in the US. So I was curious about their motivation, why they uh, go through such a big studio to to making Web3 game, even it's AAA. So one of them say that yeah I that he worked for a large gaming corporation all his life, and these companies like his company, but in general these companies don't care about the players. They just want more and more money, and uh, for them blockchain and Web three solutions is something to be worried about because uh, like players will own their assets, players will participate in money flow, and uh, yeah. So this is actually what corporations don't like to be, you know, everyone play uh, the two -way, two way circulation of money uh, worries them because uh, people will own their assets and they can quit their game if it's not nice, if it's not cool. I really believe that uh, Web3 is a chance to give players better games than they, they get now. Uh, yeah, so uh, Web3 Gaming does introduce a larger degree of ownership for gamers, but it also does inc introduce, for the first time, a real in-game economy. And an in-game economy also means that uh, the stakes are higher, especially when we begin dealing with uh, real money. 
So this also does make uh, the games more exciting, we could say. Yeah, you can, but you, of course, like you know, people who playing um like massive online games, and I don't mean only MMO, but like like anyway, like they playing uh, FIFA or they playing um uh, GTA, are they sometimes when they really addicted, they losing us lots of money as well, um and this money they can never get back, um and maybe like you know in Web three games that there will um there will be more stake on, on i mean on what what you were doing but um like you can get this money back i mean if you like um let's say if you're able to um develop your character and get lots of nice items through your like uh, through your game and uh, later just if you suddenly board this game you can just sell it you can just go to the other game but this 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 actually all your assets you can sell to the another players who are coming into this world, who are new and who want to just go a bit shortcut. There will be o- always lots of such players because even in traditional games, um, people buying the assets, even if it's uh, illegal, because the um, like uh, terms and conditions of game usually saying that this these assets are only like uh, only inside the game and you shouldn't take them out, you shouldn't trade them, um, because everything is owned by like big corporation so yeah i think this is uh um like people just don't know yet what opportunities they will get people don't know the mechanics and uh, behind the economy it's a bit harder to um still get into web3 gaming than traditional gaming and this is why we're here yeah i think one of the big hurdles for web3 gaming is the amount of extra steps uh, gamers need to take because for example you need to create a wallet a step that is not present in traditional gaming uh, can you please tell us, as a Web3 game developer, what advantages does Web3 gaming offer to developers that they cannot find in traditional gaming? Okay, um, so I will maybe first say uh, personally and later like kind of like what I think gives to, to um, like in general our project. So, I mean, personally, I like uh, challenges. So, um, like, I, I really think, like, this is uh, Web3 gaming is something more challenging than traditional games, make traditional games. And uh, Web3 is kind of next incarnation of blockchain, which is a technology that uh, already has amazing impact on the world. So this is, like, really exciting what's happening in this field. Um, and I personally want to be the like actually in the Web three. Uh, this is, was like kind of like my decision why why I joined. Um, but uh, yeah, why what actually gives to um, like project? Um, I think in general like more freedom to create because I don't know how you're familiar with uh, how actually financing of uh, games usually look like, but uh, in Web three is uh, like slightly different. Like, you know, no, uh, we, I mean, big studios, even actually really big one, they uh, always have some kind of uh, cooperation with uh, publishers and publishers um, usually uh, paying for, for the game development. Um, and such pressure actually appears because games are growing, getting more and more complex. So this for this actually what what happened next it's like big studios releasing unfinished buggy games uh players are pissed off and but they pay because they have no choice um later studios fix uh, these games for months or even later they don't fix it um so like the satisfaction of players is not on the list of corporations anymore in my opinion um, so I think that like, you know, Web3 with this um, different way of financing the project, usually it's from community or it's from people who like uh, crypto, I mean, investors who have like much more knowledge about how Web3 or blockchain works. Um, and I think the, yeah, this is the one of the way um, like to for I mean to fight with the crisis, crisis in this industry, because definitely uh, many studios has now problems with releasing good games, uh, not buggy, not like, um, I mean, unoptimized. So I think that uh, 
giving players the power to own their assets, giving them or to opportunity to participate in circulation of money. Uh, this is maybe the first steps to regaining the trust. And yeah, this is why Web3 is uh, for me like interesting as tool for games. So do you think this is just a new wave of independent game designers, indie games that is going to hit the market? Yeah, we're building such game which will be hard to collect money for like like as independent company. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, this is the one layer, yeah, the ability to have more uh, more freedom in, in, in the work. But uh, another one I mentioned earlier, like something that you you give the uh, you give the people the ownership, you give them the way to cooperate, communicate on the different level than it's a traditional game. You, if you will create uh, DAO, yeah, if you create um, voting, if you um, uh, give people the funds, uh, which like first the people spending um, uh, money uh, inside the game and later the, the money coming back for those creative ones who can uh, cr uh, like uh, wrote their own story or create the assets, sell them on the marketplace. Um, people, after hundreds of hours, they can, uh, like, you know, if, if game, like, will be successful, uh, such assets of uh, of player will be will be probably worth quite, quite some money. So um, you can play the game as kind of side job and later, you know, maybe pay your um, tuition or like, you know, like buy you some first car or like in general, like it, this, this actually in the age of um, automation AI, which uh, less and less people are satisfied from their daily job. Um, maybe the metaverses will be kind of uh, in the future, if they, they will be really huge and developed, they will be placed to uh, like, you know, for your daily job, even not only for uh, just entertainment. Yeah, we're looking at a new era of side hustles, I see. But anyways, I wanted to touch up on one subject that must be quite challenging for Web3 game developers. And it has to do with the fact that in October 2021, the Steam video game digital distribution service banned the use of cryptocurrencies and NFTs on games found on its platform. Uh, Steam is also the world's largest video game distributor. How has mainstream gaming's rejection of NFTs and crypto impacted Dark Versus development? I know that you guys started developing the game post this fact, but still, how does this figure into your plans or concerns about the space's development? Um, actually, you know, this uh, this doesn't affect our decision, you know, to make on Web3 or not. Uh, and yeah, there are several reasons. Uh, uh, you know, the second player on the market, Epic Games, uh, is creator like of of uh, Fortnite, right? Which is uh, like we mentioned before, one of the most popular online games. It's also creator of like biggest and more popular 3D game engine, Unreal, um, and they're still open to cooperation with crypto. So there is alternative for Steam. Of course, they are not so huge um, as Steam, but uh, still, like they are worldwide known, um, and they are like say trustable. Um, not only that, you know, they yeah, like they announce like this Fortnite UGC. Uh, so actually, it means that uh, like their vision uh, is uh, quite similar to how um, like we see and like crypto metaverse let's say industry see uh this interoperability uh so yeah i mean besides of that uh the biggest online games and to mention a few actually uh, i don't know like let's say league of legends um like fortnite already was like roblox minecraft most of uh, those games actually wasn't distributed on the Steam on the first site. Uh, now they are on Steam. So I mean, some of them, but uh, the, actually they gain traction, they gain popular, gain popularity uh, just on their own. Um, so yeah, that's. Uh, I think you know this is not problem for us because we believe that we can do anyway. If not with the Epic Games, then like making our own launcher. Um, and uh, yeah, this is. This is what Steam decide. This is, I think, you know, something related to how players see um, still crypto games. Uh, they reading the headlines. They see some scams. They don't understand yet so deep. Uh, they don't go deeper actually to the field. Um, base so like uh, 
this is lack of knowledge, this is fear, um, like, and some of the like thoughtful actions to secure their future income when it comes to Steam, because uh, as I said earlier, that uh, I believe such game companies they really don't want crypto because they know that they will earn less or they need to give some power to the people. Um, and of course, the like amount of uh, scams in the field doesn't help at all. Yeah. Yeah, but I think this is just a matter of growth in the crypto space because I think if NFTs and Web three crypto gaming picks up, I think sooner or later they will not be able to ignore the space and will have to get on board with it. Yeah, for sure they change their mind. They will follow the people. You know, the corporations are really um, aware of. Uh, uh, where like let's say majority of people because uh, they they are heading so um they usually pay a lot of money for uh, such research collecting the data so um this is how corporation switching from being you know supportive for um minorities or like other things you know because i mean like often it's not uh, like really what they want to do, but probably it's related to their business. So the, so this is they they following the people, they following yeah. the trends always. So what it seems that you're getting at is that there's no concern from the Dark First team about not being able to distribute through Steam because, as you've mentioned, there are alternatives. And also because I think that uh, the mentality that stands behind Dark First is that a good game defends itself on its own and people will play a good game because they heard it's a good game and not because necessarily they found it through Steam or some other large distribution platform. Yeah, yeah. Of course, like, you know, um, Steam is really powerful. And uh, people, um, for for many players, uh, it's first choice, and they going there and they see game there, or they want they. Uh, but actually, uh, I'm player myself. I mean, gamer. So um, I know from my friends that uh, the decision is not like they really love Steam so much, and they don't like Epic Games, and they want to just. For player, the most uh, um, like convenient is to have everything in one place. Yeah, you don't want to. This is actually what uh, is like another challenge, of course, for um, Web three that uh, there is like you know too many wallets, too many things like and uh, this all um, like entering this on all onboarding is quite hard. But players actually you know want to have like it would be nice to have everything in one place. So if someone have already 50 games on the Steam because the Steam was the first, then they actually won the 50, 51st game also on Steam. Um, this is slowly changing because, uh, like, yeah, as I said, and as, as you actually mentioned, uh, like the biggest game, they, they actually uh, do their own. Um, so, like, suddenly if game appears and it's only on this platform and it's on console, like recently released Zelda, which is amazing game. You need to buy Nintendo to uh, play play Zelda. You can't play it on Steam. You can't play it on PlayStation on any other uh, known platform. So yeah, people following good games, um, and uh, we will go also this direction. All right. So yeah. Is there an ongoing discussion between traditional gaming and Web3 gaming that will make it possible for this situation to change and to integrate the two spaces? Uh, you know, I'm, yeah, personally, I talk with people from game industry and uh, slowly trying to explain them. And this is hard because, uh, as I say, that their knowledge is really, I mean, they, they, they don't know, like, what's, they don't go deeper, so they don't know um, about uh, many things happening in Web3. They just uh, reading the headlines and re uh, hear about scams. So actually, um, this is not only about the players, this is also people working in the game industry. They are not sure they want to work in this field because they are afraid that they will put their reputation on the table and later company uh, will cheat on people and they'll be on the list. Um, as they don't understand the industry, they can't judge themselves, like it's worth to go to this company or not. Um, so yeah, there is uh, many such discussion in space, but mainly between people, not between corporations. Uh, I know because uh, we are a member of uh, Metaverse Standard Forum, the corporations uh, establish such like entity, like Metaverse Standard Forum, but uh, their discussions are mostly focused on uh, 3D assets, uh, IP regulations, so they don't touch crypto at all. Um, 
there is also a blockchain game alliance and they actually um like focus on promoting um web3 gaming and like talking with people outside of crypto to introduce them um such the bright side of of it uh and there is one uh new new uh, new uh, newly established uh, organization uh which is kind of copy of this metaverse standard forum but for crypto um they call it uh, like oma3 or oma3 i believe uh don't know what this means but because they don't even explaining on their on their page like what what this oma3 means but uh they are uh, they are established launched by um few major players in um crypto like amonica and like you know big fans big uh, actually players in this field so they want to you know promote uh this like discussion and the space to actually talk between the crypto industry and uh, gaming industry traditional yeah tradition but i think that's part of a broader discussion about crypto in general because when most people hear about crypto they either hear about the things that go really really wrong or the things that go really really well whereas the fact that innovation is happening in the space all the time is oftentimes ignored because the headlines don't talk about that but of course this is a process and this process is part of the uh, web3 gaming space and the broader crypto space this is actually um you know this is actually also i have such such discu- discussions quite often that uh, we need to make web3 um as much invisible as possible um like user friendly the same as is currently in the web2 um yeah we should allow regulators to you know prevent future scams um this is like really needed to um like gain the trust from such people who who really only read the headlines um and uh, as you know as we will convince the players uh, corporations will follow yeah they will come they will come after the people so if we make good games if there will be regulated market if people will be not afraid to play such games if the gaming develop game developers with experience will come and work on web3 games and will deliver even better games then like everything will fix itself it's i believe that all right so i think i have only one more question for you and it goes like this. Uh, the world of Web3 games is a fairly new field. And like with all new frontiers, change is usually dramatic and quick. What has Dark First done to future-proof the project? What are the most interesting trends currently shaping the world of Web3 gaming? And maybe you want to create a few trends of your own. What are your thoughts on that? Mm. Yeah, um, we registered a company in Switzerland. Uh, yeah, this was the first step. This was the beginning. Um, uh, you know, like Switzerland is a, a jurisdiction which uh, goes ahead with uh, many um, reasonable regula- regulations in crypto industry. Um, so I believe this is the good place to start with, with uh, like, uh, you know, and uh, yeah. And we try, of course, to follow, you know, what's happening on the market. Uh, but also we have to be realistic here because... As as I say, that the production of our game will take like three years, uh, and in Web three, three years is like whole century. Um, this is so dynamic environment that uh, like uh, you know we can't predict what will happen, how like some major things shifts will happen. So we are trying, you know, like doing this iteration, uh, but uh, like um, yeah this is why we actually decide to to um to make the game this way and uh, you know um uh, cert- i mean one of the things that give us hope for the future is of course cooperation with alf zero uh, yeah the, um you know the, I, I i i you know i i know this is alf zero podcast but i need to say yeah. that you know that guys you know team is like extremely motivated it's so I mean many great and focused people um so yeah we, fr- from the actually first meeting we have uh like similar visions of the future um we want to make products uh, globally recognizable um and i think this is the most valuable for me this uh, good chemistry um with the team of blockchain we are building on is uh, yeah one of the key factors because this 
as, as I said, that this is so dynamic environment. So actually, um, things could change. So like, you know, good connection, good way to cooperate because this is, uh, we're building on Aleph Zero, but this is also gives impact for, for uh, the company as well to, to the roadmap, to, to things, you know, like how we will, how we will make it together. It's uh, good to hear these things about Aleph Zero that you will take advantage of uh, some of the features such as the speed and uh, the privacy Aleph Zero supports. Yeah, on privacy we have quite good ideas, but I can't uh, say details now because it's kind of like, yeah, it's private, yeah. All right, wrapping up, uh, thank you, Wukash, for taking the time to engage in this conversation. I feel that the listeners and I will walk away from this episode more aware of the progress, uh, both of the Dark First project and uh, also what is happening in the Web3 gaming space. Uh, yeah, th yeah, thank you, thank you. Yeah. Actually, it was a uh, no, um, really surprising uh, invitation. Uh, uh, so, like, I'm happy to you know, share everything, and it was a pleasure to talk with you as you were player as well. So, I think we, we actually like, we you know, have things. Yeah, 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 we have this connection. Yeah, exactly. All right. Thank you once again. I'm sure we'll be in touch, and I can't wait to catch up again to discuss Dark First, perhaps when you're done with the first location. Yeah, sure. Hope, hope to come back here again. All right, that was Wukash Pleva of Dark First. That concludes today's episode. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and see you next week on the Aleph Zero podcast. Mm -hmm.